good a time as any to take a look at the car pewter I have set up. Some Alan Parsons project. Hopefully I won't get dinged on that. So, I know there's a little bit of noise in the background. I'm working on getting some ground loop isolators because I've been chasing what I assume is a ground loop for a couple of weeks now, but life and work have been in the way. I haven't been able to truly get down to troubleshooting. So, what I have set up here, flip on the light, a little Intel Nook Core i3, 8 gigs of RAM. I put a 256 gigabyte SSD into it. And this head unit is a Panasonic. It has a DVD player built in. Uh, it does 5.1 surround. Um, but I got tired of burning discs and the disc, the reader in this is terrible. So, of course, things would get scratched. And uh, having as much music on disc as I did, it's cumbersome to swap around while driving, etc, etc. So this is a solution I came up with. Again, a little Intel nook in the center console here. Eventually there's going to be a touch screen here and it's going to go behind that, I believe. That's what I'm going to do. Now this is set up so that I can switch to the radio and shut this off and of course, there's still noise. Again, I'm chasing a ground loop. But the FM radio still works if I shut that off. And it shuts off immediately. And of course, there's double the noise now. If you unplug this, the noise goes away. But I still have FM radio. This is still functional. 100% functional. It does... Um, what I like about it, and what I'm annoyed that I'm going to lose if I do the touch screen... Um, if I mute it, most of the noise goes away. It does circle surround, which is basically taking a stereo signal, s s extracting a center channel from it, and uh, basically does what Dolby Pro Logic does. It, although it does it in a different way, the different algorithm, and I think it sounds a little bit better. So, but that's why I like this, because it does this with any, it does with the radio, and it does it with the auxiliary. And really any stereo or mono source it can do. I don't really, really know where to do mono. Um, I don't have that much mono music that I listen to in the first place. So I'll turn this back on and we'll do a little bit of a tour here. The What I have this, I have this hooked up through a USB um, Sound Blaster 5.1 and I use uh, Windows 7, so basically, this is just basically a Windows 7 PC, and it's extremely fast. Um, I'll reboot it here, show you just how fast it is. Shuts down in, this being Windows, it's never predictable, but I don't have to do this very often anyway because the power supply I've got turns on and off with the car. So, it basically, 15 minutes after the car shuts off, it shuts this off. It shuts the car computer off. There's no display here because this is hooked up via HDMI, but there's how quick it starts. Basically, before I can get out of the driveway, it's ready to go. Um, it's hooked to a little power supply that's made for car computer setups. Um, that basically shuts it off about 15 minutes after I get out of the car. So if I go into a store, I just pause the music and come back out and it's ready to go. Um, unless I'm in the store for more than 15 minutes and, you know, in which case I just, um, the car will turn it, the, the power supply will turn the computer back on and it'll be ready to go anyway. So I'll just have lost my spot, which is another bug. I'm working on a few little bugs. Um, but mostly, I'm to the point now where I don't have to do much of anything. I was chasing all these, you know, BS problems, mostly relating to Windows 10 when I tried to run Windows 10. But um, that's pretty much taken care of at this point. So, basically what I have is Cody set up here with videos and music. 
um, and for the moment I'm using a little a USB mouse to do this, um, which only happens when I'm sitting still. I choose music I want to listen to, and I drive, and don't worry about this setup here. So, I, I get a lot of, I don't want to say static, but it's, it's more or less, what's the point of this? I just happen to enjoy 5.1 surround sound music. Um, basically, that is stereo music that has been remixed from the original master tapes, master multi-track tapes, specifically for 5.1 surround. So, that is, 5.1 surround has a center channel, which is, this is a discrete center channel. The front sound stage, including the center channel, is left, right, center. And then the rear sound stage is just the, the back two speakers. And yes, the center speaker is crackling. Um, it's a faulty amp, which I have to change out. I've spent more time working on the actual car pewter setup than I have on the amp, on the actual, uh, you know, uh, sound delivery. That's what I'm chasing now. Um, but basically, 5.1 surround music has been specifically mixed for the 5.1 surround field. So, again, a front sound stage, left, right, center, rear two speakers, and then the uh, bass comes from, usually comes from a subwoofer. Either it's um, high-passed and sent. In this case, I have it um, high-passed at about 80. Um, so most bass gets sent to the sub. That is for, okay, go, not, without getting into a lot of detail, there are two kinds of um, multi-channel mixes I, you know, really two main kinds. There's quadraphonic, which is stuff from the 70s that was put onto vinyl or reel-to-reel, -reel, or in some cases, in this case, uh, Q8, which is an 8-track that instead of using two tracks for one side and two tracks for another, it uses all four of those tracks on that tape for the quadraphonic sound field, which is four channels in this in that case. Quadraphonic has four channels, left, right, front, left, right, rear. Um, the bass would just be sent through the left to right channels of whatever, you know. Some have it. Quadraphonic in the 70s was strange. Um, there wasn't much logic to it. It was more of you've purchased more speakers and a better receiver, so we're gonna wow you with stuff spinning around you in the sound field, and we're gonna put the bass in the rear and the drums in the rear because screw it, you know? Um, and there are mixes where that happens, and there's mixes like this one in particular, Aerosmith Rocks, where it's much more logical, but you know, the guitar will fly around you or whatever, they'll have to, you know, the instruments will be in the front sound field mostly, but they'll have backing vocals in the rear, and that's really how most surround stuff is mixed these days, is backing vocals and, you know, maybe a guitar, you know, flourish here or there will be in the rear, or, you know, in the case of some of the Jethro Tull mixes I have, Martin Barr is mixed in the rear. Uh, his, his, um, his, um, lead licks are mixed in the rear except for very specific cases. Um, but there's there's a ton of artists, as you can see, that are mixed for surround. Uh, Beck, Sea Change being one amazing example that I listened to in surround first because I heard it was wonderful, and then I tried to listen to it in stereo and I was underwhelmed because the surround mix is so fantastic. So... And there's older stuff like this. Billy Joel, The Stranger, sounds great in surround. Uh, aside from the, the mixing decision that was made of putting Billy's vocals in the center channel by themselves, by themselves, um, which sounds a little thin at times. But this is also the stock center channel that came with this car, which is pretty thin itself. So, um, again, without going into a hell of a lot of detail. That's why I did this, because I really enjoy that music. I think it sounds fantastic in this car. Again, barring the noise, which I'll buy three sets of ground loop isolators and be done with that. Um, doing a little bit of uh, you know demonstration here, I can show you what I'm talking about. 
with a little bit of a sample here. So I'll play this. And I do have this, the, uh, if you look here, I do have the um, steering wheel controls actually working here. Okay, so a little bit of a demonstration here. So this is Billy Joel's moving out. Um, hopefully I won't get a copyright strike here as this is going on YouTube. So I have my spectral analyzer here, or whatever this is called. It's a basically low, high. There's a lot of bass in this, uh, this mix, which is nice. You can feel it pretty, uh, I like the kick of the bass, so I have the subwoofer jacked up a little bit, which is, you know, all matter of taste. Um, so this is the, uh, what, what's cool about this is, this is uh, how I set up my sound card. So I basically have the option of adjusting any of these channels. So what I'm gonna do here is give you a little bit of a demonstration of both the audio setup and this mix by taking this here. Sergeant O'Leary is walking the beats at night he becomes a bartender he works at Mr. Cacciatore's down so as you can hear some of the lyrics are in the center really most of the lyrics are in the center that's with the entire mix but if I take this out you can't hear any of the lead vocal because it's all in this like I said I'm not terribly enamored with this particular mix at least the way they mix the lead vocals because really the a, a nicer way to do it a nicer way a more pleasing way to do it is to put lots of the lead in the center some in the left and right so you get a little bit of a you know across the sound field a nicer uh, how am I uh, trying to say this a more pleasant um, I'm rambling I apologize it's, it's more pleasing to have the lead vocal spread across the front sound field rather than just starkly coming from the center channel, which on a lot of setups tends to have a lot more high-end mid than, you know, in any case. This isn't my favorite mix. We're bringing everything back up. When it's all together, it's nice. There's a few different mixes that do that. The new, the new um, Sgt. Pepper mix does that too. Lots of lead vocal in the center on that, and it's jacked up too. If I have the uh, amp turned up too loud, it overpowers, and it's it's one of the only mixes that does that in this setup. But as you can see, I can set up bass crossover. This screen isn't the best for displaying this stuff. If you get up close, you see it's really blurry and you can't read anything. I have this read the resolution dialed down to about 800 by 600. But there is a um, base management, which I, this was the final piece of the puzzle right here, was the base management. Well, sort of. There was a few different puzzles I was doing that I needed to find final pieces for, but sound wise, if I hadn't found this, I would have given up because the whole problem I had the, when I started out, the whole problem I had was the quad mixes, just four channels, left, right, front, left, right, rear. No center, no sub, at least no discrete center or sub on any of those. There was just four channels. So problem was I have six channels on the sound card, front, left, and right, rear, left, and right, center and a sub. Center is not a big deal, it's just silent. But if I've got, um, the, the, the problem I had was the bass was in the front, there was no bass because my front speakers are Polk two ways um, that don't give out a lot of bass. And then the rears obviously are six by nines, three ways. You need a little bit of kick there, but not a lot of the low end you want to hear. So, and the, uh, this, the stock, 
the way this works stock is the, the monsoon system is the uh, front was um, your highs and mids and it had a front sound field the rear was bass and a little bit of mid and it, it, it had a little bit of a uh, it was EQ'd so that it was very it was pleasing and there was a little bit of bass in the front but it, it had its specific you know it was set up for this car but I didn't like the way it sounded initially I had this hooked up through the monsoon system but I eventually just decided I wanted to try this because this is the car I wanted it's a Pontiac Grand Prix GXP 5.3 liter V8 I had a Comp G but I really really liked this body style Grand Prix and once I got this car I knew I wanted to make this perfect and this is perfection to me um, obviously not the flipping noise but again it's being worked on um, the this was initially hooked up through the monsoon system and it sounded okay but again swapping discs out having to deal with scratch discs having to deal with without getting again into a lot of specifics to this way of doing things to burn a DTS disc which just plays Dolby Digital DTS and obviously PCM stereo red book um, what it does is um, it plays you know discrete 5.1 sound uh, you know uh, sound streams so most of the stuff that you would you would download would be set up for uh, DVD um, which is cumbersome to work with because it has to be in muxed into streams it has to be muxed into VOB files which it's just it's not fun to work with especially when you're you know when you could have better when you could have flak files which are easy to work with they're a little larger but you can't burn a flak file to a CD and have it play in this discrete 5.1 you can I mean it won't play in this at all obviously because it's gonna be con converting it to PCM so I said screw it I said I'm going to put this together it took me a while and a few different iterations I had a big old laptop under the passenger seat for a while just to try it out, see if it would work. I mean, it was a freaking 17-inch monster, but it had the, you know, it was what I had at the hand, and it was the horsepower I needed to do it. In fact, I had a little netbook here under there that worked fairly well for a while, but again, it was inelegant, and I wanted it to be a little more streamlined. This, this thing is fast. It's sleek. It does everything I want it to do. It's got more horsepower than I need, really, for this. Although, it's what's nice about it. And what's nice about this, as I also, before I get into any further, the setup. All right, so the um, finding the, um, the crossover, this software, which would allow me to send bass to all the all to the sub I got off track I apologize so this was the last piece of the audio puzzle being able to set this up for 5.1 and to be able to send the bass below 80 to the subwoofer have a little bit left for the actual you know the actual speakers but send the bass that matters the kick to the subwoofer that's what the final piece of the puzzle was and which is nice because so you know 5.1 modern tracks have a subwoofer channel an LFE channel low frequency extension or I, if, I don't know what the E stands for it might not be extension whatever it's the point one in the 5.1 it's the base below whatever frequency you cross it over at in this case it's 80 and that's what provides the kick. Quad mixes don't have that. They just have the four channels with the bass mixed in with them wherever the engineer put it, be it in the rear, be it in the front. This takes that and just throws it into the sub, which this deck did by itself. You know, I could get into this menu, which is not relevant right now, but I could still test the speakers with this. It's, it's weird how it works. This kind of, you know, this seems to still affect the audio you know because there's another amp in here but this is all the 
actual audio from this deck is going out through the RCAs. It's going out through six RCA jacks and it's being combined. Again, this is slightly inelegant and I'm trying to, there's no real solution for this if I want to keep this deck in, which I think in the end, I'm going to get rid of this deck. What I'm going to do is put a touch screen here, a little put or what, what, what have you, have this computer, which I'm not terribly happy with it sitting here, have this sitting behind that screen and um, put a deck down here that I'm going to either use a line in from it into the car pewter and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. But either way, this complicates things. But I like the FM radio. I have a station here I like to listen to a lot. So it's really a matter of how much I, you know, care to have FM radio. And really this only is here because the screen is handy. It's nice to have the composite input. This has to have an HDMI to VGA, which then goes to a crappy little composite adapter I have under the seat. So there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of little pieces to this puzzle, but I have it fairly streamlined. The audio piece was this creative software that I didn't know existed until about a month after I installed this, which, you know, Windows will install the drivers by itself, and it seemed to work. But I had Windows 10, and it would install its driver, and then I'd get in the car and fire the thing up, and I'd have nothing but front two channels. So I quickly discovered that Windows 10 was screwing with, I don't know how it happened, but i get in the car and the center, sub, rear channels would all be down. It would just be the two front two. So I had, I had a period where I'd hackintosh this and ran Mac OS X on it for about two days before that, and then that was completely useless. Um, for some reason, Windows 7 became, you know, the perfect operating system to run this on because it's it's been peerless. I don't have to worry about com configuration. And then the control piece of this puzzle, because I didn't have a, an elegant way to control it. That's the other problem I had, was obviously these buttons do nothing for Windows because this is a proprietary deck. It does nothing. The buttons, they do nothing. Um, so, and there's one button here to control it with. For a while I had a little rotary controller called a, um, it was a um, Griffin, uh, what was it? It was a little rotary encoder and I can't remember what it was called at this moment. But it was a little silver knob that sat here. It was a USB, a power mate, that's what it was called. It was a little silver knob with a light on it. I had pictures on one side or another at some point. Um, not that anybody cares, but, um, that amp is driving me nuts. It's a cheap little amp I got from Walmart like four years ago that I used for a subwoofer amp, so it's a little bit knackered, and it's now popping like crazy. In any case, the, the problem became, the final problem became how to control it, because obviously I can't be sitting here screwing with a mouse while I'm driving. I can't be, you know, I gotta change the track, I gotta get my mouse out and find this comically tiny mouse pointer, and then, oh yes, I have to find a way to make this big because it's, you know, minimize. It's just basically having to control a computer while driving is not, you know, it, it's a deal breaker. It's not elegant. Somebody else wants to drive my car, would have to, you know, which basically is why the deck is still in here partially, is, you know, somebody else needs to get in this car they don't want to be screwing around with this. And, and it's a learning, you know, it's, it is slightly a, a learning curve. I can, I can, I'm seeing the pros and cons of wanting to do this. But basically, the problem became, how do I control it? And the solution was um, a little kit I bought um, from, I can't remember what site it was now. I decided to do this on a whim, this video. So uh, I bought a little kit online that allows you to plug into uh, plug a USB in to uh, car pewter and it interfaces with my steering wheel controls that come with the car 
Um, it basically just works off of um, off of resistance. Different re these all have different resistance values. All these buttons. So, and at one point when I was wiring it up, I accidentally attached it to the paddles, and as I flipped the paddles, I could see the uh, little bars moving. This program here is what controls it. Again, blurry AF. You can't read it, but as you can see here, as I'm pushing the volume down button, you can see that little bar moving. I'm volume up, and it, you can see it's interfacing. It knows what I'm doing because I set these up specifically for this. Um, basically, anything I really want to do, it's important. I can do right from here. So volume up, volume down, obvious. Mute works as expected. It's mute. Play pause. Just play pause. These are exactly what you know as advertised on the box. Here's where it gets a little hairy. So track up and down. So if I hit track up, it goes to the next track. Only the good die on. I hate this song. I like a few songs in this album, but it's not my, Billy Joel is not my favorite artist in the world. It's just this album I happen to like and it sounds great in surround. So um, track up and down works as expected. Now here, these two buttons basically control what Cody looks like. So this one is the slash key, which in Cody, well, it's the backspace key. If I hold it down, it's slash. That's what's cool about this kit is you can do have different functions for long press, which makes this perfect. It's because I can Cody a slash makes the uh, makes it full screen or not full screen. So if I hold it down, I get a slash and it makes Cody full screen. So I don't have to screw around with finding the right, you know, because that requires me to pull out the software keyboard or an actual keyboard, you know, and just these little problems I had to solve one by one because I'm ridiculous and enjoy this. So, but without a long press, this is backspace, which backspaces all the way back into the now playing screen, which I think looks pretty slick. I downloaded this plugin that has the uh, music display behind the artwork. And then the other button, the bottom, is M, which gets rid of that overlay. Um, and I forgot what the long press is. What is the long press? The long press is I, which I can't remember what I is at this moment. I, I obviously thought it was important when I set it up. So there's that. There's the. Uh, that I think is really slick. That is the final piece of this convoluted puzzle that I decided to inflict upon myself. But basically means that really you get in the car, this pops up, and barring a few minutes you sit here going, what do I want to listen to? Which I've done a few times, having 250 gigabytes of surround music on here that I can listen to at any one time, you know. Blue Oyster Cult, there's Bob Dylan, a couple of the things they mixed into 5.1 in 2003 or 4 or whatever. Bob Marley Legend, that sounds really cool. Boston self titled that's an up mix. That's where somebody's taken a stereo mix and done some spectral editing to, which actually happened in a couple of uh, professionally mixed uh, 5.1 mixes, which happened in the case of Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell. The master mixes master tapes for a couple of the songs on Bad Out of Hell were lost. Uh, I believe it was Heaven Can Wait and um, uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Those two songs were lost or the master, the, 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 the vocal tracks were ruined in the case of Paradise. Um, Heaven Can Wait is an upmix. They basically used some you know, some clever editing to throw, and it's done with phasing, spectral editing and, and phasing and things like that, you know, uh, without, again, without getting too technical, you can extract things by flipping one channel's phase and taking the, the what's left over, basically, after you flip the phase and throwing that in the rear, for example, which on some, in some uh, cases, the way that the albums were mixed brings out you know, separates a lot of this uh, cool stuff. Um, I have a 10cc uh, disc that they were able to make sound really cool with a lot of 
you know, discreet sounding things thrown in the rears. It's nothing special. It's nothing I listen to on a regular basis, but it's cool to pull out once in a while. But actually this is a commercially, this meatloaf disc is a commercially released disc. Very out of print and very expensive now. Um, that a, had a, basically an up mix on it. It's what they're called, up mix is when you take a stereo source. This is also an up mix, these Led Zeppelin discs. These were never released, you know, somebody took their CD or whatever and did some spectral editing and Led Zeppelin 2 actually sounds very discreet by itself. You know, they did a lot of weird things with the, uh, with the stereo and the way they did it, I guess, allowed whomever sat down with this in the spectral editor or in the, uh, you know, they were, they did some cool stuff with phasing that allowed it to, I mean, at one point in, um, whole lot of love, Jimmy Page is like flying around, around your head, which they did that with stereo when they released it on, you know, vinyl, it was, he was flying back and forth between the stereo channels. In this case, you know, it, the effect is enhanced, you know, and so it's, this is really sort of specialized nerd obsession. Um, but, you know, a lot of people did a lot of work on these things. And they're largely forgotten now. Ace of Spades sounds fantastic. There's a lot of bass on that. Um, Harvest is weird because they mixed it strangely. The Downward Spiral, that is fantastic in 5.1. And then, we get back to good old Billy Joel here. Stranger. And as an added bonus, if I want to watch Rick and Morty, I have to have the uh, USB key because I actually have a little a USB deal here that I can... Sometimes it doesn't show up because it's hooked up to it, a hub here. And now it should be in there. Here it is. Again, some of this is fiddly and still in beta stage. So I had a little bit of stereo and surround music. I had a... Tom Petty died a couple weeks ago. I downloaded this and wanted to hear it in the car. and. Incidentally, another issue I had was stereo stuff initially would just come through the front channels, but Cody has an option where you can upmix it, where it basically takes the front two channels, takes 50% of that and throws it in the center, and then the rear channels, it, it does basically normally, and then it throws the bass into the sub as it's, as it's, you know, expected to. But if I want to, you know, watch Rick and Morty, while I'm stopped, of course. I can do that. And it looks great, because this is a, from the, the Blu-ray. And, added bonus, this is 5.1 audio as well. It was mixed into 5.1 in the DVD, or Blu-ray. So the music is nice and clear, the way it's supposed to sound, and the, you know, the dialogue's in the center channel. It's a little bit wonky. None of this is is particularly uh, elegant yet, but that's kind of the fun, is working through the bugs and making it yours. And this is the way I want this car to be. I've really, really enjoyed this car, and I've really enjoyed putting this system together. I was kind of a, a dream, because that sounds stupid and trite, but it was something I wanted to put together, and I fought through a few dumb problems and again it's an elegant but at this point I shut off the car and it'll shut itself off in about 15 minutes here I do have an Optima red top under the hood which has saved my bacon a few times while this was in uh, beta test phase but it is what I want it to be now. Oh. You can't really see her, but she's pretty. Pontiac Grand Prix GXP. The way I want it. Thanks for watching. My dumb rambling self. Have a good night.